Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you all can hear us well. I we are today going to speak about MES, and um, I had got my colleague uh, Kias from Holland that's going to join us. He's actually joined, but he is on mute. So please, Kias, could you unmute? Uh, nevertheless, uh, thank you everybody for taking the chance to listen in to this um, this morning. Um, also, if there are any problems with anything, we are now, and you are actually our guinea pigs, we are testing out these new fancy features of online meetings within Teams. So, um, sorry if there are any problems there. That in that, uh, among other things, means that you can't speak so this is actually a live stream and but you can ask questions throughout the event and in the end we will take up these questions so if you publish a question we get that question immediately and uh, we can then summarize that in the end so uh please i think i'm going to hand it over to you kias our super mes expert down in benelux so yeah okay thank you Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kees Lambrechts. I'm uh, with Novotech uh, Benelux, as Tobias uh, introduced. Um, so this is actually the second in a series of uh, webinars that uh, we as Novotech are going to host uh, in the co next couple, two or three weeks. Um, these will be one hour or, or three quarters, uh, actually, with some remaining time for questions. Uh, webinars with, with different topics, as you can see. Last Friday, we kicked off on machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, and uh, there are other uh, webinars uh, about historian, about production planning, uh, data communication, and uh, SCADA, high performance HMI. And then there is a series uh, that, uh, well, you can follow and you can register on, on the webinars that you're most interested in. Um, today we're going to talk about MES, Manufacturing Execution System. And I gave it the subtitle actually, how to start uh, your journey to operational excellence. Because we will see that is operational excellence is actually what uh, we uh, would like to achieve for our customers by uh, implementing and introducing an uh, MES system at their facilities. Um, this is uh, the agenda for the webinar. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about what is operational excellence. Uh, why uh, uh, would you want to achieve that? Um, we also call it a journey, actually, as you see in the picture behind. It's, it's uh, what we see at most customers is that there are different disciplines involved uh, by implementing an MES system um, because of its rich functionality. Um, several people, uh, so it's, a, it's clearly a team effort where everybody has his own uh, knowledge and skills uh, with him. Um, and together actually you, you have that aim for um, yeah, reaching uh, world-class manufacturing. Um, we talk about how we can help as Novatec to, to get you started, um, what uh, our best practices of our customers, uh, how other customers did this. And I'd like to uh, um, finish uh, actually with uh, a short demonstration that you get an impression uh, what this MES system could look like. Um, so first of all, we talk about operational excellence, and this is a slide I used uh, some years before, and as of today, actually, with all the cancellation of sports, it's perhaps more actual than ever. Um, but it's very uh, typical in sport that you're trying to be the best in uh, what you do. And this is the uh, 100 meters sprint, uh, and if you look, actually, the achievements over time, um, from one century ago, actually, uh, you see that there's always room for improvement. That's actually the message of this slide. Um, trying to be the best and 
with continuous improvement, continuous techniques, better training, um, uh, gaining more skills, um, doing things more clever. You see that currently we are at around nine points, or we, <laughs> it's Usain Bolt actually, who is at 9.6 seconds uh, in, in 100 meter sprint. And um, the, uh, uh, the impression is that that, that will be uh, improved even more. Back to our own expertise, and that's helping manufacturers uh, also uh, in gaining operational excellence and in, in trying to be the best in what they do. And that's actually making products on demand, that's important, um, at the lowest cost possible with the highest quality. And that's often the balance we see that our customers are, are struggling with. Uh, on the one hand, they need to minimize costs. Um, on the other hand, they would like to maximize the quality of the products that they are producing. And there's a third uh, uh, factor involved, which says, OK, uh, we need to continuously uh, look at what the customer wants and, and try to optimize customer satisfaction. And in these days where uh, uh, batches are, are getting smaller, the diversity of products are getting bigger, um, that's often a challenge. And, and that's also where detailed scheduling gets involved uh, because you're trying to optimize the capacity of what you, can, what you have in your plant uh, with the, the demand from the customers, what they are asking in order to fulfill these questions uh, at the best possible effort. So when we drill down into costs, uh, it's literally uh, uh, the three M's that, that make these costs in uh, production environments. So on one hand, it's men, it's, it's staff, it's operators uh, that are controlling, uh, monitoring uh, machines. That's one other cost uh, factor. And on the other hand, there is materials involved, of course. <clears throat> So for each different vertical, actually the, the balance between these three costs are, uh, have a different uh, percentage. So we have customers actually um, making cheese where we see that most of the cost goes into the materials. It's an average of 10 liters of milk that goes into the production of one kilo uh, gram of cheese. Uh, so that makes up a lot of the uh, uh, the cost factor for production of these uh, cheese. On the other hand, steel making processes, for instance, uh, they are very uh, capital intensive or high cost uh, uh, machine assets, uh, uh, production uh, uh, capital, um, and that puts more cost on, on the machine factor, while in other production environments, more discrete or assembly type uh, production environment, there's perhaps a more cost on the uh, demand. So this is what you need to think about when you want to implement an MES system. Um, overall, you want to improve productivities and there are actually two ways to do that. One is look at the cost as we've seen in the previous slide. Another approach is that to want to improve uh, you can improve the yield. And there's a difference actually in efficiency and effectiveness. Because efficiency, if you're improving efficiency, uh, you are cutting down on costs. But if you're improving effectiveness, uh, you try to improve the yield. The same actually, uh, uh, both uh, tactics can have uh, a result in increased productivity. More detailed, actually, because this is what an MES system uh, tries to achieve for you, uh, is uh, actually increasing the overall profit of your operational uh, activities, either by uh, downsizing the costs or otherwise uh, by improving the yields. And some examples there or of down uh, uh, of minimizing the costs or like improving uh, in, uh, in quality, first time right, uh, reduction in working process or energy reduction. 
And on the other hand, increasing in uh, yield uh, is uh, like increasing throughput, increasing on-time delivery, and OEE, <coughs> increasing of overall equipment effectiveness. Besides there, there are some baselines uh, functionalities that MES systems deliver as well. Uh, important uh, uh, for uh, root cause analysis uh, or um, to comply with uh, regu regulatory uh, and, and, and product safety uh, regulations. So that comes down to traceability, um, to make visible where production is and to comply with uh, standards that are applicable for your vertical. Some examples of uh, MES systems uh, achievements that, that have been in place, uh, uh, so in practice, uh, either downsizing on costs or improvement of uh, yield. And it's uh, up to your own specific situation, of course, where is the, uh, the initial gain, the low hanging fruit, uh, and how you uh, uh, can start your journey to, uh, to operational excellence. We can help you with that as Novatec. We have uh, quite some experience actually in uh, also uh, uh, not only uh, designing, setting up MES system, but also looking at cost of implementation and looking at return on investment, of course. Um, so we have templates on return on investment calculation sheets, which can help you actually uh, to, uh, 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 to see where um, uh, the cost savings can be or, or yield improvements can be in your situation um, compared to the, uh, the investment of uh, setting up and installing an MES system. So if you're interested in uh, doing this calculation with us, reach out to your local Novotech uh, uh, contact and um, we'll go through this uh, exercise together. What we see where most people start is by implementing actually an OEE system. And the reason is quite uh, obvious. OEE stands for effect, the E stands for effectiveness. So it's trying to increase the yield actually. So it's trying to produce more with the same means. So with the same men and machines. OEE consists of three factors. It's uh, trying to get the most out of your uh, assets, so trying to optimize or maximize the, uh, the uptime, the availability. And second, trying to optimize the performance, the, the speed at which the machines run. And the third factor is trying to optimize the quality so that there are will be only or as much as possible good products coming out of the machine. What's also interesting in, uh, uh, to know is that uh, only a, a slight increase of the overall equipment effectiveness, K KPI, uh, can get you a significant increase on margin. And that is explained in, in this slide actually. Um, with the example of a manufacturer, uh, and let's say he produces 1000 pieces uh, of product uh, a day with a cost of uh, 300 euros on man, 300 euros on machines and 300 euros on material. <clears throat> if you can sell these 1000 pieces at one euro a piece, uh, that leaves him a margin of 100 euro. Now in this um, virtual situation actually, what would happen if you could only increase the OEE of this uh, manufacturer by 1%. That would lead to the following situation, where you still would have 300 euros cost on men, 300 euros cost on machines, but you would produce 1,010 pieces instead of 1,000, and you would need uh, slightly, or also 1% more material, of course. And you see the increase in margin is not only 1%, but it's 7% increase uh, by only increasing 1% OE. 
So it's kind of a lever effect uh, what you uh, can reach and that explains the interest of uh, the industry actually on recording OEE. Then we'll see there are several ways to, to do that. Um, you can record OEE eh, on paper, you can read it uh, um, uh, in Excel. Uh, what we try to achieve is actually uh, automate the OEE recording and measurements as much as possible. So making connections to the machines uh, and recording the events uh, when they occur uh, so that it's most accurate recording and also that it's not bothering actually the operator uh, too much of his time uh, and that the figures don't need to be typed over again. The OE time charts in more details to what we're trying to explain and, and catch in the system actually is why uh, do we have uh, uh, less uh, time available for this machine? Why do we have unplanned downtime? And why are there, uh, can, the, can the machines not run at full speed? So why are there speed losses? And why are there eventually products coming out of the machine that are not 100% good? So why do we have quality loss? And if we are able to capture the reasons for this, for these deviations, then uh, overall we can address these uh, and then we can optimize actually the effectiveness of our producing uh, manufacturing assets. This is like I said, what we try to achieve by installing an MES system. And uh, we as Novatech work closely with uh, GE, General Electric. They have an MES system which is called plant applications. Um, it's a fully automated MES system that sits on top of uh, a historian, as you see in the uh, automation triangle. Recording actually as much machine signals as possible and interpreting that uh, into a central production database. The system consists of uh, four functional modules um, and it follows literally actually your product flow. Uh, it uh, is able to um, monitor uh, your inventory, to execute your production schedule, and to realize product genealogies. Actually, what it does is the digitization of your plant floor, where production orders or, of, of products that need to be produced are fully digitalized in a paperless manufacturing environment. Uh, execute it uh, and, and also recording all the circumstances in the plants that have been uh, uh, that, that happened during execution of that production order. First of all, functional module on efficiency management is realizing the story I just told is on, on OEE, uh, tracking reasons for downtime, capturing reasons for waste, uh, calculating automatically availability, the performance and uh, the quality, uh, summing up on OEE and generating reports actually, so that you can on the fly, real time actually drill down into specific KPIs. Okay, why is the availability only 34% right now and uh, uh, what can we do about it? Second, there is quality. Um, and quality goes a bit further than these are good and these are bad products. Um, it's all about specification management, um, statistical process control, uh, monitoring critical uh, process parameters uh, and comparing these online real time uh, with the applicable product specifications. Um, Alarms can be generated when things are or tend to be uh, to go out of spec, um, leading to lower production waste, scrap or production recall uh, costs. The overall aim is here uh, producing uh, right products at the first time. 
Then there's production management, the concept of production orders, track and trace genealogy of products. It's very important uh, when you try to do root cause analysis, you have an overall overview of your product flow, your material flow in the plant um, to see where products uh, have been uh, produced, uh, how materials have been consumed from one lot to another, uh, and how batches are split up uh, and, and uh, uh, merged together again, uh, finally ending up in the boxes that of, uh, uh, on the pallets that, that leave the plant. And the whole series of um, material genealogy actually is also captured uh, by the plant applications production management system. Finally, we see also there is a combination often uh, in, in, in batch typing processes, batch execution systems that work together with uh, according to the IC88 standard. Um, also, there is an automatic interface because these systems generate a lot of information that is interesting for an MES system. Um, we're trying to integrate that uh, and, and to be able to uh, provide batch summaries uh, in the, the MES system as well. Now currently um, we are at version 8, uh, 8.1 almost coming out uh, of plant applications and the biggest shift actually that happened over the last two versions is that we switched completely actually to web-based interfaces. So I'll try to give you a demo shortly um, where you can see actually uh, from a browser that depending on the person who logs in, the screens he needs uh, in order to execute his job well uh, will be provided to, uh, to him. And the benefit is of course that these web-based interfaces can be uh, used at any device, so from a desktop, but also from a mobile tablet or even uh, a PDA or mobile phone. And that's what we see more and more, um, making the uh, uh, operator uh, um, more uh, capable uh, to, um, uh, to look at the information at the moment and, and at the, the, uh, the point in time or the place where he, uh, he needs this information. Supervisory dashboard with production KPIs, so an overview of three production lines here where you see the OE figure based on the other three quality, performance and availability. <clears throat> and here is a short movie and that will be in the demo as well where you see there's also drill down capability so you can look at different views of the underlying data that form the uh, the overall kpi so what is the reason for scrap what is the reason for loss by product can i get a summary of overall lines a timeline actually on events because events is actually the, the concept of event is very important in an uh, MES system. So it's a journey of a group, different disciplines, as I said in the introduction, um, and the purpose of the MES system is to answer actually different questions of these uh, different for uh, uh, these different roles. So the planner might perhaps be interested in can I can I still plan this uh, uh, production order while the operator uh, needs to know what materials he already can fetch for the next order while the process engineer is interested in detailed uh, process data uh, in case something went wrong with the batch and management wants to have reports actually on on uh, performance KPIs uh, over uh, the last days or last week. So we at Novadec actually developed a, a template solution on top of plant applications and uh, a prophecy scheduler. And that is actually following um, the day of a life of a production order. So once a production order is released from typically from an ERP system, 
Um, we uh, uh, capture all the associated data with that production order. So the quantity, the product we need to make, eventually specifications, bill of material. Um, and that is actually put into the detailed planning system. The detailed planning system looks at the available capacity and plans it on the particular line with a, a planned start and end time. That information is then immediately visible to the operator because he has his own view uh, at the machine looking at the orders that are scheduled for that particular machine. He starts the production order and at that moment all the events actually that happen uh, during uh, uh, execution of that order are recorded into the MES system. It can be detailed process data compared to specifications of the applicable product uh, and that is interesting for the process technology, the process engineer to look at and do his uh, analysis. And finally, uh, central information can be reported in several ways to the management and even back to uh, the ERP system. So it's actually like a digital thread with the production order as the information carrier, uh, both providing information to several screens and also collecting information during execution uh, so that at the end we exactly know what happened with the production of this order. Put it in a different uh, format with the, uh, the typical automation hierarchy level uh, one, two, three and four, four being the ERP layer, um, production orders being released, a data stream goes from um, level four to level three, um, eventually it can go through production schedule, scheduling, which is an option by the way, it's not mandatory. Um, if your ERP system already has a detailed scheduling solution, then we can go immediately to production execution, which is providing operators with a list of orders that need to be executed, um, eventually uh, together with some work instructions, perhaps some set points that can be downloaded automatically uh, to the machines or to the PLCs. And once the operator press start, then we start collecting through the historical data everything actually that's happening, all the events uh, like material consumption, uh, but also downtime, uh, performance, uh, quality uh, indicators in favor of production analysis and eventually production reporting. Uh, reporting also back the time and material bookings uh, to ERP so that in ERP exactly they know also what costs were involved uh, in making this production order. Looking at it from bottom up, it's really at the bottom you see what's happening is the uh, uh, machine is producing. Um, we collect the data and we store this data in a data historian. And from this data historian, we extract production events. And a production event can be uh, anything, like the start of a batch, uh, the consumption of uh, a lot, um, or the production of uh, a product. And all these events are then stored and recorded under the applicable production order. So the template solution we developed at Novotech, it follows actually uh, the plan, do, check, act uh, uh, cycle of uh, um, improvement, uh, continuous improvement by Deming. Um, trying to uh, make a logical uh, step, actually a logical approach by following the production order. So the first interface is the planner and the planner, as mentioned, it receives the uh, order planning from uh, the ERP system. It then has the capability to provide an overview through a graphical Gantt chart 
uh, on the demand and capacity and then helping actually the planner to optimize the production order based on certain rules. And the business rules uh, can be uh, configured actually towards your own needs. So for instance, you want to start the day off with Allegheen products uh, or you want to start actually your uh, painting line with the, the light colors first. Um, it also provides feedback, important feedback information to the planner on the progress of the uh, production order execution. And that's an important uh, feature of uh, our OPEC solution offering that we have the ability actually to uh, feedback uh, production uh, progress automatically to the planner so that he sees when a production order uh, takes more time than foreseen or takes less time and he can take appropriate action uh, on that for the orders that come after this. So it shows them, helps him show bottlenecks in the near future, not only in, in available machine capacity, but also in material availability and operator availability. So how many uh, operators do we need with this plan tomorrow? He can do simulations. What if I put these orders on another line um, and once they are released for production, then they will be communicated to the, uh, the screens at the line. And then there's also standard reporting capability that you can compare the reality with the actuals uh, afterwards. So this is what the, uh, the Gantt chart looks like. It's a graphical overview uh, of uh, your production lines in each box is is in, uh, an operation within a production order. Um, and you see at the bottom the implication, the consequences actually by shifting the operations uh, to the workload graph and on the other hand to the material. So the material bar at the bottom is like an um, indication what the material uh, inventory will look like when this plan is executed. Uh, as it is uh, provided right here. Which means that you can take action if there is shortage on material, you can take action on forehand uh, so that uh, the production is not, will not unnecessarily go down. This information is then the list of production orders taken to the operator interface which gives him an actual order overview, the sequence that he needs to execute the orders, but also the, all the information that goes along uh, with the production order, like the bill of materials. Um, it can show the instructions actually, like uh, to clear the line or to do uh, uh, the, the right setup for the line, because we know uh, of each order uh, what product and what uh, set points and what requirements are necessary. It can also warn the operator of, of certain checklists that need to be executed at certain pace in time, like every hour he needs to check the labels or he needs to check uh, the content of the bottles, uh, the level. He can do some quality measurement recordings, um, he can record reasons uh, for uh, uh, occurred downtime and, and, and waste events. And also important, the system gives him instant feedback on how the way how he is uh, performing. So this is the um, web interface that provides an overview of the order scheduled to this machine. And from here, the orders can be started uh, or paused or uh, uh, set to complete. This is how downtimes are automatically being recorded uh, while the operator is asked then to enter the reason for downtime. And this is actually an uh, overview screen on the real time status of this. Uh, machine. So you see the status, the produced amount, uh, the number of waste units counted, um, the speed at which the machine is running, 
the OE calculations, and then there are the shift events, uh, auto, all, everything automatically recorded. So it gives him a dashboard actually on the status right now. And it can be extracted to more machines, of course, if there is a manager or sometimes these, are, these screens are put on TV screens um, so everybody can see uh, what the status is and where the focus needs to go to uh, at this moment. Quality checks can be integrated into the system, so a live indicator that operator needs to execute a quality check. Uh, and uh, everything uh, is also recorded eventually with some comments um, into uh, the central system, which gives then the process engineer the ability to do some root cause analysis in, in, in case there is a quality problem. Um, he can do online trending uh, of the historical or the recorded process data. Important for the process engineer is the genealogy, so he has to have the capability uh, to look at when the material passed uh, this particular machine. So both backward and forward traceability are supported. Um, combination of trends with events, so downtime is typically an event and a trend of a temperature, uh, a homogenization temperature perhaps goes over this. And there is statistical process control charts available so that you can monitor uh, uh, drifting uh, KPIs uh, and trying to be uh, alerted before something uh, goes wrong. Comparing different um, process data um, with another batch or perhaps with a golden batch uh, that you can easily uh, try to figure out what, what went wrong. And other kind of analysis, this is actually an integration then with uh, Power BI. Um, so everything we record typically in a plant applications database can be uploaded to a Power BI cloud tool, which gives you even more flexibility uh, to show downtimes uh, in this case uh, for a particular type of product in combination with a line um, and, and, and see if there are uh, uh, particular correlations that could be of interest for you. Particularly interesting in Power BI is the Quick Insights option. So Quick Insights uh, is a mechanism that looks at correlations in data and, and can show you deviations or, or peaks or abnormal um, deviations. Um, and you can easily pin these charts uh, in order to monitor them for a longer period of time. The bottom line is that this is, all this data is being provided, recorded by an MES system and then uploaded to a Power BI and all Power BI does is making uh, the correlations in the data visible. And finally, managers, uh, of course, there's a reporting system, production reports, yield reports, efficiency, downtime top tens, all drill down reports, and then the capability to compare uh, between lines, departments, or even uh, different plans. Plant Applications now has the ability to um, upload its data to a cloud platform, uh, Manufacturing Data Cloud, uh, from where you can uh, also compare uh, the, the performance of uh, between different plants. Reporting is done through our own developed reporting tool by Novotech, Report Plus, um, which is an add-on on Microsoft's uh, reporting services, SQL Server reporting services, um, and gives you the ability to also integrate events data with historical data from our historian. So, all these screens, as mentioned before, are developed to the principle of what GE calls mobile first. Um, so it's meant 
to be run on a tablet, um, which uh, uh, is seen by uh, uh, the big fonts, uh, big buttons, that it's easy to use and also easy to put together. So you have the ability actually to compose your own um, user interfaces. As of the latest version of plant applications is now fully integrated with uh, GE's operations hub, uh, which is actually a rapid web-based application development platform. But that's covered in another session. Here you see some other screenshots. And what we often see once again is the uh, television overviews where you have performance of multiple lines uh, indicated in a very easy visual way. <clears throat> so leave me time to hopefully go to the uh, demo real quick. Um, so this is actually the web-based interface, as I said, for the operator, which gives him an overview actually on um, what he is producing on the several lines. These are breadcrumbs. It follows the plan model of plant applications. Um, so here you can see which order we are producing, what kind of product, what was the start time, um, the progress, the events that took place, and the OE calculation. On the left menu, I can switch to different uh, topics actually. As you see indicated, there's one order actually active. And of that particular order, I can retrieve all the information being provided by the ERP system. Also the bill of material, for instance. I can also uh, uh, check actually or scan, so make the connections actually here of the material that's going to be consumed for this particular uh, ingredient. And also I can ask for some instructions that are applicable for this uh, product type or this particular product order. Also, another overview actually uh, can be given. So it's like more like a Gantt chart. This is not the scheduler, but it gives you like the operator or the, the, the team leader an overview of multiple lines in this case, uh, where you can see what the current production schedule uh, has been uh, put together by the planner um, looks like. Then, there's automatically recording of downtimes. You see 20 downtimes need to be uh, uh, added with a reason. Um, and that reason comes from a central configuration. So I have a downtime recorded here at the particular start time. Um, this one had no end time yet, so it's still open. Um, where I can Click on the reason, you see how easy it is actually. Um, so with one touch on the screen, I can record that this was a belt break. I can put some comment here and I can confirm uh, and close actually this uh, downtime. So by this way, you can put multiple and very quickly actually record the downtime reasons. Same for progress, uh, scrap. <clears throat> Particular pieces, you want to know what was the reason for that. And you record it and it's recorded in the system so that it can be taken care of in the further analysis. Quality. Um, some people are aware with the plant applications know that quality that the auto lock was a very popular display actually um, in uh, the, the thick client of uh, plant applications. Well, with the same definition actually, you can uh, um, use for uh, filling in actually quality samples over here and also recording or visualizing some trends compared to that. So here's different auto logs 
that comes with different parameter definitions. And then there's SPC, statistical process control, of course, uh, you can use um, to see if there are any uh, out of spec conditions with respect to uh, the Western Electric uh, statistical process control rules. <clears throat> then there's the concept of activities. And this is a screen or a new concept that has been developed by GE uh, in version 7 of the product. And it works like a task list actually, where you can uh, indicate to the operator that there are certain tasks to be performed. And you see there can be multiple people working on the same task list. So first of all, if there's a kind of task that I would like to execute, then I ask for this and I see it is in Dutch because it follows the uh, the standard of the, um, the browser. Um, but here I can enter the numbers and you see it immediately checks with the uh, applicable specifications. So this one, <clears throat> is out of spec because it needs to be between 247, 243. So I did 20% of this task. This is like a task list that can be uh, <clears throat> used. And finally, there is the trending which gives somebody like a product engineer uh, the ability to, uh, to look at detailed process data. Everything integrated into one user interface. And you see I'm logged in here as engineer gives me a little bit more options and I would like to close with the OE analysis. Being a Power BI integration into the same system as you see where you can select orders and you see the downtime levels, downtime distribution per product. And I want to look at the contribution of this product type or this product type. And you see how the other graphs follow actually my selection uh, dynamically. I can have a look at the orders of week one. These are the orders. These are the overall OEE per order. And I can easily select the orders that I'm interested, the best performing orders or the worst performing. Compare the size of the orders with the OEE uh, KPI. Um, looking at production per order <clears throat> or only the waste, overall waste, which is the which generated the most waste. <clears throat> and all the nice graphs that can be used by uh, and produced by uh, by Power BI itself. Um, this was actually what I wanted to show. Um, not sure if there's time or capabilities or possibilities to to post questions. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it is. It is Kiss. So uh, whoever had got a question, please uh, submit it, and uh, Kiss will take the opportunity <coughs> to answer those. Or, uh, of course, if you, I think you have our emails, uh, at least mine. Uh, most of you, so um, just email and we will, I will connect you to KS and we can answer any deeper questions or more um, other subjects that maybe, maybe you want to have clearance on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you, you get, you've shown everything you need, you wanted to show KS because I think that you have, if you want to show more, you can, you have the opportunity, you're still 
actually 10 minutes to go. Uh, <clears throat> There's always more, but no, I think this is mainly uh, the... Okay, uh, good. Uh, So um, with that, I really would like to thank everyone for taking uh, the time to attend this. Uh, you see our na names and emails uh, on the window. And um, as we saw in the beginning, we have a number of other very interesting webinars coming up. Uh, so please join them too if you have the opportunity. Some of you have already signed up. It's always time to sign up for more if you would like to do that. Um, so thank you very much and uh, stay safe and uh, what we always talk about internally, follow the regulations and, and the, what the authorities say and hopefully we can end this uh, corona thing fast as possible. Thank you very much everybody. Bye. Bye.